Hello everyone and welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to go through an interior modeling and as you can see uh, this model was already created some renders uh, with V-Ray. However, I found this online and I wanted to just create some renders with it in Enscape and maybe later on just compare what the difference quality is. So um, as you can see, we have a dining room, a kitchen here, um, we have the living room and also bathroom let me check uh if there's anything else here i think not okay perfect so uh first things first as always i'm gonna get started with composition and i'm gonna start off with the dining area so over here i'm gonna try and create something like a one third so the rule of thirds kind of uh composition and the first steps as always i'm gonna open the visual settings i'm gonna go at the output i'm gonna go to custom and i'm gonna type in 1080 by 1350. Uh, by the way, uh, for anyone watching right now, please let me know in the comments where you guys are watching from. I'm always interested to know more about everyone who is tuning in. Uh, maybe I'm just going to wait a few more seconds until everyone joins. In the meantime, I want to see everyone down below uh, where you guys are from and uh, how long you've been running for. So. Uh, this is always, always interesting to me just to know more about you guys. So anyway, um, this is the composition that we're going to leave out here. So the resolution is going to be 1080 by 1350. And on top of that, I'm going to click the save frame tool. Now, the next thing to fix up the composition is going to be to uh, do the two point perspective. This is just so that all 90 degree angles are actually straight. So all vertical lines are going to be at a 90 degree angle. And on top of that, I'm going to go to the field view. I'm going to keep it at around 60 and I'm probably going to leave uh, the angle to something like this, maybe even lower it a bit more. So something around 45 degrees. I think something like this is going to look fine later on. So I'm going to go to the view management and I'm going to save this in as uh, camera one. All right. Um, Meanwhile, everyone else joins in. I'm going to go over here at the render quality up to ultra and I'm going to go to the material um, editor. And the first thing I'm going to edit is this curtain material right here. So I'm going to select it. And in order to fix curtain materials, I'm going to need to go to the transparency section. I'm going to use a cutout map. I'm going to go to the textures and I'm going to open it up from where I've downloaded. So we have uh, Mitesh from India. Thank you so much for your videos. They're really helpful for me. Uh, I really appreciate that. I'm glad you find them helpful. We have someone else from Egypt. Um, that's very cool. Everyone else, let me know where you guys are watching from. As always, I'm very interested to see and know more about you guys. So I'm going to leave the curtains over here at the foliage material type as of now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some lights from the outside. So I'm going to go over here. And there's basically two different things that we can do here. I can either go for uh, adding like adding some lighting, which is spotlights, or I can either go ahead and add the rectangular lighting like uh, whoever did this in V-Ray um, kind of did it that way. So, but for me, I always like, I always do these spotlights and that's what's been working for me. So I'm not going to change that up anytime soon. Uh, we have Albert from Atlanta. Thank you for much, so much for joining in. Um, I notice you every single time I live stream, you're joining. So I really, really appreciate that. So uh, what I'm going to do with this spotlight is I'm going to multiply it this way by four. And uh, let me just save this real quick because sometimes when playing around with lighting, uh, Enscape can bug up and SketchUp can um, crash as well. So we have uh, someone from Ireland. Very, very cool. We have people from all over the world. Uh, let me know where you guys are are from everyone else watching right now and also let me know how long you've been rendering for. Okay, so meanwhile, the SketchUp tab kind of uh, loads up and saves. Um, let me know anytime you have any question about uh, the whole process, I'll be looking at the chat here and ready to answer it. Um, I always watch your video, sir. Great person with great experience. Thank you, I really appreciate it, Sandish. Um, Dipesh from Nepal, love you, brother. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you very much guys for watching and joining and hopefully you find these videos helpful. Also, do you enjoy the live stream that I'm doing regularly every single week now? Um, I find it uh, like a very cool way to interact with all of you and it's a very efficient way for me to create content because I'm doing a live stream and then from the live stream, I'm doing a video and then from the video, I'm doing like shorts. So um, I kill like three birds 
with one stone basically. So as you can see, I have a bit of an issue with the way the shadows look over here and the way that they're casted from uh, the spotlights. So I'm gonna move these away from now and I'm gonna try the different method with the rectangular lighting. So I'm gonna place it here and I'm gonna direct it. Let me make it as wide as possible and as long as possible. Uh, I'm gonna increase the luminous power for now and let's see how this looks. Um, one second. Okay, so these ones, these spotlights, I'm gonna move them even further back. Maybe it eases off uh, like the way that we have to set up the lighting. So I'm gonna move them even further back over there. So uh, this is maxed out, I guess, but maybe I can move it in the inside. Uh, and also something else that I have to do is I'm gonna go to the visual settings and I'm gonna make the sun brightness to zero because it's interrupting the way that our lighting is set up as of now. Uh, would like to know from where, uh, from how many years you're using Enscape. I've been using Enscape for uh, three and a half, almost four years now. And also if you could show your first render, I actually have my first render here in the PC. Uh, do you guys wanna see my first render that I created with Enscape? If you want to do that, to see that, let me know in the chat. Um, if there's enough people that want to see that, I have it somewhere here in my computer and uh, maybe I can show it to you guys. My first ever render that I created. Let me know in the chat if you actually want to see that. Um, anyway, let me move on to the current renders. So uh, I'm gonna move along to uh, where I was left over with this rectangular lighting. Let me rotate over here. I'm gonna go to our scene. Uh, I'm gonna move it a bit further over there. Yes, yes. Uh, from Sudan, living in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Thank you very much for the amazing content you make. I'm glad you enjoyed. Uh, I'm gonna find the. I'm gonna find the the the, uh, the first render that I've created in just a minute. Let me just. Let me just uh, edit the materials and everything else here. I'm also going to add an Azure real quick. So I'm going to go to Skybox. I'm going to go load Skybox from file. Uh, let me find my Azure uh, Let me load this in. I'm going to increase the brightness of the Azure brightest point in sun direction. I'm going to try to rotate to see uh, the different effect that it has on our rendering. Uh, we're going to play around with lighting a lot more later on. I just want to make sure that I fix some of the materials first. Anyway, uh, let me move around here. Let me select this wood material. This one needs to have a lower roughness as well. That way it reflects a bit more. Also the marble material. Uh, let me make this 30. We're going to fix a lot of this stuff later on. Uh, let me try and find the first render that I have created. I just learned Enscape for my architectural renders and your videos really helped me a lot. Thank you, keep up the good work. Big thank you from the Philippines. Um, well, I'm glad that my videos were helpful. And um, yeah, I, I'm just happy I'm part of uh, so many people's rendering journey, especially with Enscape. Um, let me find something real quick. I'm trying to find the first render that I ever created and it should be somewhere over here. Um, shorts, reels, 2024, February. I know I had it right here. So basically, uh, let me check. It should be, oh yeah, I found it, okay. So this is the first ever render that I created with Enscape. And as you can see, it even has the trial version that I was using. I didn't even have the full version. Um, the only thing that made me use Enscape is because they had a free trial, it was easy to download and my computer was very, very bad and it was the only software that my computer could handle. Uh, just as a quick story, so I was using uh, ArchiCAD back in the day for modeling. I didn't know SketchUp. I still am not like 
like super professional SketchUp. I just can go from point A to point B basically. But this is the first render I ever created. It was uh, a private house for uh, a cousin of mine. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can see that it looks awful. I'm not sure what I was trying to do here. But yeah, I mean, uh, this is this is the render that I did, yeah, almost four years ago. And uh, basically, I'm gonna show you render I just did a few days ago. Yeah, and this is a render I did a few days ago. This is my first render with Vantage, by the way. I have a lot more renders with it, Enscape as well. So yeah, um, cool story. I, I always like looking back a bit just to see the progress uh, that we have made. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to choose this material real quick. I think I'm going to go for the Enscape material library. I'm going to go over here at plaster and I'm going to choose plaster 05. Uh, and I'm going to place it right here on the uh, ceiling. All right. So there has been, I'm not sure what's really happening here. Okay. Enscape just bugged out. Uh, I learned a lot of things from you and I'm working now as an interior architect. Um, well, glad, glad I could help uh, along your journey. All right. So uh, next thing that I'm going to try and do here, I think these kind of um, this over here is supposed to be metallic. So I'm going to go for the metallic slider at 100 roughness at 30. I'm going to do the same for this over here. Uh, roughness 30% metallic 100. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to keep on going and going. So I'm going to choose this. I think this is already fixed. Uh, we're going to need to play around a lot more with lighting. Something else that could help here is I'm going to choose the curtain. Maybe I'm not going to leave it as full each, but I'm going to make it uh, self illuminated. Also, let me turn off the auto exposure. Let me turn on the exposure a bit. I'm going to go for auto contrast, saturation higher. Um, and now I think I think I'm going to take this back to foliage. Hi, sir. Hello, Melos. What computer are you using now? I'm using a um, I'm using RDX 2060. It has 128 gigabytes of RAM. I know it's an overkill. I didn't need that much RAM, but I mean, just in case and uh, I'm not sure what else. No, I'm not using the 4090 card uh, and I use an i9, but that doesn't matter in terms of like Enscape. Enscape runs a graphic card. Uh, quick question about exercise files from the course. Can we use it to make our portfolios? Yes, you can use it to uh, create your own portfolios. That is the whole idea of uh, keeping the exercise files in the course. Anyway, let me move over. I think we're going to need to play around a lot more with lighting. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make the color temperature to something a bit more like this. And uh, I'm going to keep on going. So I'm going to also add some spot lights. Uh, let me just get to a good angle here. I hate navigating in SketchUp, by the way. I'm sure a lot of you guys also hate that. So I'm going to save it first because I'm going to need to add some spot lights. And any times I add spot lights, SketchUp crashes in me. Um, hello. Hope you're fine. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you. We already made some progress in the rendering. I think if I do some tweaking, the lighting and some of the materials as well is going to look much, much better as well. Um, I'm going to test out one more time with uh, doing the lighting with spotlights. I'm going to see how that is going to affect the render. So let me take the spotlights as well here on uh, this part of the render. I'm going to place it here and I'm going to load an IS profile from downloads. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to turn it slightly on. This is too much. So maybe if I turn it up to around here, that would be fine. I'm also going to apply a warmer color to it. So I'm going to copy this, move, copy. Um, I'm going to copy it over here as well. And I'm going to copy over here as well. So this adds a bit more variety to our lighting. Uh, maybe I lower the intensity a bit. Maybe I keep it at something like this. Also, uh, in order to make these look even more realistic, I'm going to choose this uh, material. I'm going to make it self illuminated 
and I'm also going to keep it a lot warmer and I'm going to increase the luminous. Let me try and put it around here. Watching live from Ghana. Thanks for watching. Uh, I did it on Enscape. Awesome. I'm watching live from India. Nice. Um, if you just joined in, please let me know where you guys are watching from. As always, I'm always interested to know that. Um, let me move on. I think the, this part of the kitchen needs a bit more lighting. If you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to ask me too. I'm going to be looking over the chat and answering any question that I can answer. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and grab the spotlights once again. I'm going to move them over here. Well, I think, I think uh, the curtain material is causing us some problems with, it's causing us some problems with the way that um, I guess, I guess this can work, but I, I mean, I think I'm going to need to lower the intensity. I think it looks better with this lower intensity. Okay. And also, I'm also going to need to try a different HRI or I might need to increase the intensity of this one. I mean, the brightness of this one. Uh, but no, I think I'm just going to try out a whole different age drive because I think the issue is in the actual image of the background. Uh, let me try this one. Watching live from Belgium. Nice to have you here. What age drive am I using now? I'm using the midday age drive. Wasteland clouds. Uh, no, I don't want this one, but yeah, maybe I just increased it a tiny bit. Okay. This trender is looking much, much better right now than what it was looking like before. What I'm going to need to do is I think because of a highlight burn there, I'm going to decrease the roughness on the marble. I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to add a bump map. Uh, I'm going to decrease it to 0 0.5. Yeah, something like this can work. And then I'll definitely, definitely need to add some lights on the kitchen area as well because it just looks way too dark right now so i'm gonna go over here i'm gonna add a spotlight let me save the file once again because it always crashes on spotlights can you do three ring with enscape full-time income that's basically what i do right now it's fully with the enscape and also by the way that's not something that only i do there's a lot of people that do it um i've mentioned this previously but in case you're new here uh, there's a lot of huge architecture firms that use Enscape in their workflow. So PR Kingles Group, Norman Foster Architects, and a bunch more. Watching from India, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, hopefully, I'm able to do you a favor by joining. So, okay. I'm going to go to the load IS profile. I'm going to load an IS real quick. I'm going to increase the intensity over here as well. Uh, I think this one is a bit too narrow, so I'm going to try and find a wider IS profile. I guess something like this can work. I'm going to copy it. And yeah, I think I'm going to decrease the intensity a bit. Awesome. Not bad. In the 14 days, including the SketchUp modeling, one of my friends wants to learn and he has zero knowledge in SketchUp. Yes. Uh, the 14 days course also includes tutorials about SketchUp modeling and I go basically from zero to realistic renders uh, where we would take floor plans and model them in SketchUp. I mean, uh, for anyone wondering and wanting to join the uh, course, I just left the link here in chat. Uh, that is where you can join. When using sherwin Willem colors, it's difficult for me to get the exact shader that I want. Um, well, I mean, it all depends. So I think I'm going to leave the saturation a bit lower. I think this one looks very good. Honestly, it doesn't look that bad as it is right now. Is there room to make it better? Definitely. I think the lighting isn't looking right on the kitchen here. So I'm just going to take this off completely and I'm going to create a whole new light source and I might, I might just make it rectangular or maybe what would be a cool idea as well is to add a light source outside instead of, uh, instead of making it like vertical from the ceiling down below. Anyway, let me copy these two light sources, or maybe just the rectangular one. And I'm going to use the move or the M key to move the light source over here at these other windows. Let 
Try and move it closer. Mm, no, I don't like it. I'm going to leave it to something like this. Honestly, I think this view already looks quite nice. Uh, what I can add here, maybe I can decrease the field of view a bit. And also maybe increase the roughness on the wood flooring. So I'm gonna open the material editor and maybe I'll leave this at like 75%. Uh, no, I don't like that. Maybe 65%. That can work. Um, and yeah, I think this is gonna be it for this view. I'm not gonna go in too many crazy details because uh, as you know, we're in the live stream right now and I don't wanna waste time on a lot of stuff. So this one, I think this view we're done with. I'm gonna go over all the image settings uh, once again. Lens flare, we don't need that. Bloom, not needed right now. Uh, this can work fine. I mean, maybe adding, maybe adding like, um, Maybe adding a plant, like some greenery in the interior could help. Uh, let me check if we can do that. I'm gonna go over here. How we can increase lead light's power, basically just by going in the Enscape Objects tab and uh, increasing the intensity. Hey, it's awesome uh, learning. Yeah, hopefully you're learning uh, from this live stream and hopefully the live stream is awesome as well. Uh, Tito Askender says, hi, I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia. I use Enscape for six months. Awesome. Uh, would be very interested to see your progress in terms of uh, Enscape and what you've done lately. Anyway, let me move the plant over on this side. I'm gonna try and see how it actually looks. Uh, not sure if it's gonna be the right move, but I'm just gonna make it anyway. I'm gonna make it larger. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm gonna go over here. Also, one other thing that I'm gonna need to do is maybe I add, uh, I cannot see the difference of the shadow sharpness here that much, honestly, but I'm gonna leave it as low as possible because I want the shadows, uh, I want the shadows to be soft. Anyway, uh, anything else that I like to do here, ambient brightness, I'm gonna increase this. Uh, we don't need the wind. We don't need fog. Sky is already set up and the output and all that stuff is already ready. Okay, um, what else can I try out here in this view? I think I'm pretty much done uh, with what I wanted to do with this view in the live stream. But um, let me also try to decrease, I mean to increase the roughness on the chairs here. How to add more contact shadows. What do you mean by contact shadows? As in uh, where the object is, like where surfaces are intersected with each other. For example, the legs of the chair, I guess. Uh, do you mean that? Okay. Let me go for this. This looks a bit softer and better. Um, maybe I can try a different HRI where we have more context in the background. So I'm gonna try that. Let me go for the urban HRI. Oh, I think this one looks much better. I think having context like this definitely helps. Nice. Awesome. 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 All right. So I'm going to render this out, uh, how to render in maximum resolution in 4k. You just go to output and you choose ultra HD here. I'm going to export this out and let me just check real quick. I'm going to go to my live stream folder. And I'm gonna save this right here so that later on I can use it for thumbnails. Okay, I'm gonna wait until this renders out. Any other questions you might have, let me know in the chat. Uh, Daniel says, watching from Qatar, I've been using Enscape for two years now and I learned a lot from you since the first day I used Enscape. Uh, I'm glad I could help and yeah, I'm, I'm trying, uh, I'll probably want to visit Qatar soon. Seems like a very, very interesting and cool country with a lot of culture, by the way. So, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the second view here. Now, what we're gonna try and do in the second view is we're gonna do basically the same thing. It's just that I'm gonna need to move these light sources from here to over here. 
let me first set up the composition. So we're going to create a whole new different custom preset, custom preset I'm going to type into. I'm going to go in this one and I'm going to increase the field of view. So maybe something like this. And as I do this, something else we're going to need is, uh, well, let me just create a camera or like a view for the camera here. So maybe something like, uh, let me check what kind of view would work best here. I know that this can work. So this is very cool. I think I'm going to add, actually, I might do two more views just because I think I'm going to go through these very quick. So let me add one view over here. So I'm going to do camera three. This is going to be camera three. This is for later on, but camera two, I think I want to keep it at something like this. Yeah, I think this can work. Let's go camera two. And we can move that around later on if it does not work or something like that. Anyway, so in order for the lighting to work here, what I'm going to need to do is, first of all, I'm going to select these light sources. And uh, let me just select all these spotlights. I should have grouped them earlier. That way I could move through them a lot faster. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one that gets a bit lazy about this stuff. Uh, this doesn't happen when I'm actually doing real projects, but since we're on live stream and this is just to kind of showcase uh, to you what Enscape is capable of, I'm kind of... Okay, um, what I'm gonna need to do here is, let me check, I'm gonna go back to camera two and edit, I'm gonna do hide. Okay, so if I hide these and then if I update the camera over here, these shouldn't be available in our render here. I think there's still some lights coming. I think it's, it's the ones from uh, the kitchen area. So I'm gonna need to turn those off as well. Let me go inside here. So I'm gonna need to select this. Let me move backwards. All right, I'm gonna go to camera two once again. And I'm going to go to edit, I'm gonna do hide. Um, let's see how things go around for this time. So for these ones, we're going to try the same lighting as previously. I'm going to do the spotlights. First, let me add the spotlights from the ceiling. First, I'm going to save the file. Thanks for creating free tutorials on YouTube. Uh, well, you're welcome. How to add a glare effect in rendered image. Glare effect. I think you're talking about like lens flare or is that something else? I'm not sure what exactly you're talking about here. Hello, sir. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Okay. I think the file was saved here. All right. Let me move on to the lighting. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to create a new spotlight. I think I might just copy the ones from the dining room just because I think they were perfectly balanced and I don't think we're gonna to need to make any changes onto that. So I'm gonna choose this and I'm gonna go over here. Let me do three X and then I'll copy this one over here as well. All right, these spotlights help a lot because they give us some vertical lighting as well. So it's easier to balance some things out. Nice, I really like the way this is going. Uh, let me move this one over here as well. Perfect. Is there anything else that we need to add here? Okay, let me use this one as well. I'm gonna move copy up to here and I'm gonna move copy up, up to here. All right. Not too bad as of now, they're a bit too strong because we didn't add any serial lighting yet. But as soon as we do, everything's gonna be balanced out. Let me first try to do this with the rectangular light. So I'm gonna try this over here. I'm gonna make it super wide and super long. Uh, let me move this over here and let me increase the intensity of it. I guess it looks all right like this. I mean, it doesn't look bad, the lighting already. Uh, one thing that I would change is I would add some more uh, brightness to the HRI. So that would definitely help. Maybe do we want this warmer or not? 
No, I guess the white one was fine. Okay, there's a few things that I can already notice here. Uh, I think we already need to make this a bit warmer in terms of the color temperature. Well, this makes it cooler, so I guess something like this can work. And then uh, something else we're gonna need to do, I think what is super important in this image is adding the right bump maps in the sofa as well as the carpet or the rug, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna add this in full out bump map. Uh, let's see how it looks. And I'm gonna make the roughness at 70% and I'm gonna do the same for this one. So roughness at 70% and I'm gonna add the bump map over here. I'm gonna max it out as well, I guess, yeah. Uh, let me see if this wood material is fine. This one is fine. So we already have a lot of stuff set up from uh, We already have a lot of stuff set up from the last scene that we did I'm gonna add maybe a displacement map here. Maybe a bump map. Let's see. Let's max this out as well Maybe eight hello have you created videos with uh, Revit and Enscape, no, I don't use Revit and Enscape that often on YouTube. I do like private projects uh, in that side of things, but not like not on YouTube. Anyway, uh, let me play around a little bit with the auto exposure. Uh, let me try and increase the exposure myself here. And let me turn off the auto contrast, let it increase the spotlight. The shadows look all right. I think more contrast can help here. Um, I'm thinking of also adding spotlights here. So let me save the file once again. I, I want to make sure that uh, the file doesn't crash while in the live stream because that has happened a few times until now. I mean, not in this live stream, but in other live streams. All right. By the way, if you guys want to learn how to create renders like these in just 40 days, um, if you're not aware of, I have a course where I go through everything you need to know in order to create realistic renders with Netscape. I'm going to leave the link of that down below once again uh, in the chat and I'm going to pin that message just in case you guys want to take an extra step and just fast forward to making more progress with realistic rendering. Anyway, uh, let's go to the Netscape objects. I'm going to select the spotlight and I'm going to go from here up to here. Uh, I think, yep, I knew it. Uh, let me, let me, let me open sketch once again. Yeah, I, I could tell that we were about to have a crash because, um, a lot of times that I use the spotlights, SketchUp apparently doesn't like them, or I think there's some bug, I guess. Anyway, is sofa model high density or optimized? Where can we get such models? Thank you. I mean, you can get very good models in the sketch warehouse as well. Um, you just have to filter with a polygon amount. So the higher the polygons, the more organic, I guess, the sofas are. So yeah. Let's wait for the SketchUp to open. I'm pretty sure it should have saved the progress because I think it did. Uh, Enscape is gonna take a while to load here as well. So in the meantime, uh, while everything loads up, uh, feel free to ask any questions you guys might have. I'm gonna delete this because these are just making our files a lot heavier. Also, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add the spotlights uh, before, wait, um, where is the Enscape Objects tab? See, this is already bugging out. So I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna open it once again. So, oh yeah, by the way, let's see, let's see how the first render that we created looks like. Uh, let's close this one. Can I use only dry for outside lighting sort of put a bunch of spotlights? Uh, yes, you can use that, but I think you're in much more control when you actually direct the spotlights or any other light source in terms of direction, the intensity. I mean, you can control the intensity of laser eyes. Well, um, I, I just I just prefer to use, maybe it's more of an old school way or maybe not as ethical because there's not actual real spotlights where replace them, but you know, it does the job well. And I mean, it's basically an automated process for me as of now. 
Anyway, let me add this. Let's do like well, 8x. And I'm going to select a bunch of them. Let me go from the behind because it's going to be easier to kind of select all of these. All right. Let's make a group. Let's actually copy them upwards as well. Let's go 8x. Wait, let's go 8x. Okay, uh, let me go to the Enscape Objects tab once again. Uh, I think this is bugging out. Okay, I got it over here in the other stream. Let me use this. I'm gonna make the beam angle as high as possible. Let me increase the intensity a bit. And while Enscape starts over, um, you guys can let me know if you have any questions about any of the process until now. Let me try and find the actual render that we did earlier, uh, where I actually exported it. So it was a dining room render. I think it came out looking very good, especially for the amount of time that we actually spent on it. So interior apartment, uh, this one. Yeah, I think it looks all right. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of highlight burn over there. But other than that, um, other than that, I think it looks pretty good. So the auto enhance even adds more contrast, which I think makes it a bit better. So yeah, I think this looks very, very, very good. Well, not extremely good, but it looks fine for the amount of time that we spend on it. Uh, anyway, let me go back over here. Enscape is gonna take a while to load because the file is heavy. There's a lot of different stuff there. Um, how many spotlights is different from using uh, what do you mean how many spotlights is different um, as in as in how many spotlights do you need to replace a rectangle light is that what you're asking all right so uh, if you guys have noticed um, up until now especially this year we've been very very consistent with uh, the content creation even last year the volume was nice. It's just that you know, I'm I'm testing a bunch of different kind of content I'm posting a lot more uh, Business oriented advice for Argus artists, but also like I want to keep the core thing here That build my channel, which is actually unscaped content uh, But other than that, I think I'm gonna do a lot more content with Vantage as well this year If you haven't heard of that software yet, it's basically a software that is being introduced by chaos and I think it's very, very cool. It has amazing quality. I've tested a lot of stuff with it up until now. Uh, I can show you some renders that I've done with Vantage. So if I go over here, yeah. So this is an exterior render that I did with Vantage. I'm gonna open it up in the screen in just a minute. Yeah, so this is an exterior render that I did with Vantage, I think, last week. And I'm going to upload a tutorial on YouTube, maybe, about it. Let me know if you guys want to see a tutorial of this on YouTube. Um, if you actually want to see how I created this render on YouTube, let me know in the chat, and I'll be happy to upload the spotlights. I realize that and enjoying it a lot. Glad you do. Um, well, yeah, I'm just testing out different type of content and also keeping... Uh, up the content with landscape, which is what I guess most of you guys enjoy. Uh, yes, please. Adrian says, yes, please. Uh, hopefully, landscape can load up a bit quicker. Yes. Uh, have you, are you guys familiar with Vantage? Let me know in the chat if you've ever used Vantage or if you've seen any Vantage content or even seen it mentioned in like social media or anything like that. Are you familiar with Vantage? Okay, so Enscape has finally decided to load up and we're gonna be back on track. I don't think we're gonna have any more crashes because uh, we're done with lighting up until now. And I think we're gonna need to add more light sources. In case we need to modify lighting, we're basically just gonna need to uh, take off some of the lights. Anyway, let me go to camera two. Let me add the safe frame tool. Um, let's see, let's see what we can do with the intensity of the spotlights. Maybe we lower them down a bit. 
I don't see any difference. I just think um, the intensity is overpowered by the rectangular light over here. So maybe I lower this down a bit. Hmm. Let me just copy all of these. So I'm gonna copy all of these different light sources over here over on the right as well because there's a bit of an imbalance going on. I think this makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I think the intensity is too high. I'm not sure if it's because of the spotlights or the rectangular light. Um, I think it's because of both. Let me test the spot, uh, the rectangular line once again. I think just using the rectangular light works fine here. So I'm not gonna play around with that too much. I think I'm gonna leave it at auto contrast as well. Uh, maybe something like this a bit more. Uh, maybe a bit higher saturation as well, but yeah, honestly not much else that I would need. Maybe we could add some LED lighting from over here. So if I go to the spotlights, let me add a line light. Hopefully SketchUp doesn't crash on us once again because I guess we still needed to use more lights. I'm gonna increase the length of it, increase the intensity of it a bit more. Uh, that is way too much, I guess, but yeah. I think the render also needs to look a bit more vibrant or maybe that's just the design of it. I guess there's just too much beige and like white colors here, which do not help in terms of making the render more vibrant. Anyway, I'm gonna copy this upwards as well. And one more time, uh, let me just move this over here. All right, let me take this off. Let me move it once again, perfect. And then I'm gonna add some rectangular lighting All right, like every time I'm adding new lighting, I'm just waiting for uh, SketchUp to crash. Perfect, let me move it a bit more onto this side. Okay, let me increase the luminous power. Yeah, this looks a bit different from the, uh, the line lights, but I guess I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. I'm not gonna be super detailed about this stuff. Anyway, okay. Uh, is it to be possible to make realistic and escape? Yes, definitely. We need six RDX 4090 to open the Lumion 49. Yeah, I know. Uh, Amir from Eth Ethiopia, thank you so much, bro. Uh, glad you enjoyed. It's very nice to see people from all over the world here. All right, I'm gonna go to the Enscape Material Editor once again, and uh, I'm gonna choose the current material. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the transparency map and I think I'm gonna make it a bit smaller because it's just way too big right now. All right. So, I mean, this view, I think we can add more saturation like this. Um, let's try and add some shadow sharpness or maybe lower the ambient brightness. Yeah, I think it looks fine. Um, not as happy as with the other view, I guess, but yeah, I think um, the, the curtains make it a bit harder to add the lighting from the outside. Anyway, I'm gonna render this one out as well. I'm gonna go to uh, the folder where I save all the renders from live streams and I'm gonna save it in right now. So this is render number two. And at the end, we're gonna go through everything. Uh, sorry, how how, use, how using many spotlights is different from one rectangular light outside window? Um, I guess the angle is a difference. So usually when I use one single like rectangular light, as I see now, the HRI is not bright enough to justify the lighting in the inside, but uh, let me give it another try. Maybe I can make it a bit stronger. Yeah, whatever. Uh, let me move on to this view. Yeah, it's basically just 
kind of giving direction, I guess, and the beam angle and all that stuff. I also find the rectangular lighting a bit harsher. Uh, okay, so this angle looks very interesting as well. Uh, let me turn on auto exposure. Uh, we need to modify the material on the TV as well. So I'm going to choose a TV and I'm going to, uh, it doesn't have to be metallic. It can be something like this. All right, let's move this over here. Let me increase the roughness a bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be all black, just like a dark gray, I guess. Uh, more specular and lower roughness. All right, I'm going to choose this wood material. I guess it looks fine. Yeah, not a bunch more I would actually change here. So let me also rotate the HRI. Nice. Yeah, I think it looks very, very good. Not much I would need to change here. Let me go over here, saturation, maybe let's make this a bit warmer. Something like this can work and I'm gonna render this out. Uh, number three as well, perfect. Well, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I think this was a quick live stream. We already have mo most of the modeling done here. So we basically just did some composition, lighting materials, visual settings, basically everything else except the modeling. And um, yeah, let me know if you enjoyed, let me know what you think of the final renders. I'm gonna open these up um, in just a few minutes. In the meantime, feel free to let me know any questions you might have. I'm here for a few more minutes in case you want any personalized feedback about any stuff uh, or, or like process do you have with rendering. So interior apartment, this is the first render that we created. This is the render we created with, uh, yeah, in the dining room. If possible, can we know where you are from? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm from Kosovo, Eastern Europe. Um, it's basically the youngest country in Europe. Anyway, um, this render, I think this one came out looking very cool. This one looks fine as well, honestly, not too bad. Uh, one thing they forgot to add, I guess, is also the uh, is also the depth of field. That would help definitely. Uh, as you can see, the auto just uh, in Windows actually is very good, so um, it actually enhances renders quite well. Anyway, what do you guys think of the renders? Do you think these look good? Uh, a lot of you were asking if you create realistic renders in Enscape. Uh, hopefully this answers some of their questions. So the whole workflow is here and documented. If you guys want to create realistic renders like these in just 14 days, uh, you already have the link in the description and in chat and uh, pinned as well. I'm gonna copy and paste it just one more time in case you wanna check it out and fast forward your progress with rendering. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? I'm looking forward to hear your thoughts in the chat here. I'm gonna be here for just a few more minutes um, in case you have any other questions. So I'm gonna be uploading a lot more content across all of my other social media. Uh, is there a way to add materials to models that looks like that sofa without it looking exploded? Is there a way to add? Is the is there a way to add materials to models that look like that sofa without it looking exploded? Uh, I don't understand exactly what your question is. Which one is more fit for landscape, Revit or SketchUp? I always say that SketchUp is the best fit for landscape. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people use Revit as well. Can you please explain what IS profile in Spotlight you're using one right now? So IS profiles are basically files that have uh, the calculation of the distribution of real life lighting fixtures inside basically a file. And once you import that, the spotlights actually distribute the lights just the way that light would actually distribute in real life, if that makes sense. Hi, are your YouTube tutorials different from 14 day course? Yeah, of course. I mean, why would I just put out the same videos in, uh, in a course? We want SketchUp plus V-Ray now. Well, I don't think I'm gonna do a lot of SketchUp and V-Ray content just because it's already very saturated. Uh, but maybe I might do some in the future, let's see. Anyway, uh, what do you guys think of these renders? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts and uh, wondering if you guys have any other questions. Uh, right now it's like 6.30 p.m. here at the office. I wanna have to work a bit later today to create a lot more content. 
Uh, next week, I'm going to uh, digital bow or bow digital in in um, Germany. I'm going to meet up there with the chaos team, and then later on, I'm going to go to the chaos offices in Bulgaria by the end of this month. So I'm going to put up maybe some uh, vlogs from meeting everyone from probably the biggest 3D rendering company out there, I guess. So yeah, just one session like this one, love your renders. Uh, glad you do and hopefully you found the tutorial helpful best site for Azure eyes polyhaven.com slash Azure eyes always use that i was never affiliated by them they never sponsored me it's just something that i share all of the time because that's what helped me throughout my journey well i love it especially the dining room yeah i like the dining room a lot as well i think it came out really cool i like the depth over here these materials and just the higher contrast makes it look very cool but i think these ones look fine as well anyway well uh hope you guys enjoyed as always, uh, looking forward to see you on the next one. And uh, keep watching the channel, turn on the notifications because I'm going to be posting a lot more stuff like this. And make sure to turn on the notification so you don't miss the next time that I go live.